pleased to meet you all. I'm Jennifer Astwood, and I'm from the USA. Uh, I, have an associate, I am an associate professor of industrial design at the University of Wisconsin-Stout. And thank you for coming tonight. I want to thank my Russian host for being so hospitable, from, from the students, uh, Azam, Yulia, Mikhail, so many Mikhails, uh, Artan, Proctor, Yaroslava, Philip, uh, all of you have been so welcoming and so wonderful, so I, I greatly appreciate that. It's okay. Uh, as you can see around here, uh, there's many examples of some really great results of hard work and dedication from my students. If my students could please stand up so we can give you a round of applause. I asked, I asked Vladimir if we could have a, a translator for my time here, and he said language barriers were fun. And it was, it was a lot of fun, I think. <laughs> it, was, it proved to be challenging at times, and it also proved that the language isn't always such a barrier. Like, I understood people through hand movements, through the power of design. American students and Russian students are pretty similar. Uh, Uh, first and foremost, I'm a teacher, and uh, I have been teaching for about nine years, 11 years if you count my graduate studies. And within that, I've, I've always meet new people, and what's so great about teaching is that everyone has a different way of perceiving the world and wants a diff to get a different vision across. And I see myself as a teacher, as an instructor, to help people go beyond their vision to see all that they can achieve. So um, my background is industrial design. And so I'm here to tell you a little bit about industrial design. Jennifer Astwood is my name as I introduce myself. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am from Menominee, Wisconsin, right about there. Uh, and this is the university which I teach at. Uh, I've been very lucky to be here. And I, I love teaching. Uh, I'm definitely, this was what I was born to do, is become a teacher. And I love interacting with people. And I love seeing how their visions come to life. So that is first and foremost. I'm also a mother. I have two wonderful daughters. Uh, I'm also a ceramic designer. So I see the world not just through products, but I also really value form and how the world sees form. Um, my experience ranges from exhibit design, sport utility, to consumer ele electronics, to housewares for Target, and industrial equipment. Um, and the world of industrial design, it's all around us. If you, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, from your bed, from your nightstand, from your watch, from being in a doctor's office, from interacting on the train, uh, from touching the buttons, all your interactions, you deal with design. You deal with good design and you deal with bad design. And I am very passionate about this. Uh, it involves a lot of time and effort. What you think is so easy or what you don't even notice because a good design, you don't even notice your interaction with it, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of sketching and making uh, and making it beautiful. That takes a lot of hard work and detailing the design. So some parts we touched on that in the last two weeks and some parts we didn't. We didn't really dive into the research so much but, or the sketching but making. And we discussed a lot about making it beautiful and detailing the design. So in the world of design, we have fuzzy problems. There's not a black or white answer. There are many options. And as you can see here tonight, many people perceive the, the answer to the problem in many different ways, which is really fascinating and exciting. But we have to start from somewhere. 
we have to start with research and understanding context and background. So in industry, do a lot of research in terms of observational research, interviewing, and all that. Um, and you need to define, you need to define the environment in which your product's going to live in, the visual inspiration, and you don't want to just repeat what's out there. You want to make something better, something beautiful. So context, environment, sorry, uh, context, environment, and inspiration. So we started with Russian fairy tales. Me being an American, I was not familiar with Russian fairy tales, but my students, they, they introduced me to a whole new world. Uh, and then from there, so they, they picked a fairy tale, and then they picked the environment, the context in which the design was going to live in. Then they sketched for a little while, for like a day. <laughs> uh, and then they did a lot of development, a lot of development. So here's me this summer, my first interaction with Russian designers such as Yaroslava and Philip. And I am doing the same thing. I'm making a light. I'm sketching. I'm making paper models. I'm 3D printing. In this process, the more you make and repeat, make and repeat, the better it becomes. Because you notice the flaws in your design. And that's what makes it so much better. And I, the process of iteration, reprinting and reprinting and redoing it, is just amazing. Now, when I was in school, which was back in the 1900s, which some of you were probably six, five years old during that time period, uh, we didn't have these rapid tools that you all have. We didn't have 3D printing. Uh, that was very magical, and that was very expensive. Uh, so I see this time period as being such an exciting time period where design and makers can learn from their mistakes and grow in, uh, we call it failing faster in the US, failing faster. So the last two weeks, we started with sketch models, paper prototypes, uh, laser cutting, iterations with electronics, iterations with 3D printing, figuring out what worked, what didn't work, uh, what components we struggled with, and then just a ton of making and repeating, making and repeating. Here we have Azam with his wonderful sketches. Uh, our Tom making paper models along with Sergey and Krill's <laughs> architectural model, and then Misha's whale and the light. So all this iteration funnels into a solution. It can create impressive, pr impressive successes, and we've also had some pretty impressive disasters this past week, such as we see here. This is uh, Donald Trump, are you familiar? Uh, but it's been amazing to see how each person has grown and they ask, well, what do you think, what do you think? They keep on asking me that, and I want them to try it. I want them to try different things, and they did, and they worked really hard, and they created great solutions. So that is the industrial design process. Uh, it, in, 10 minutes or less, but there's a lot to it. So you need to define the opportunity, define the context, ideate and develop, and repeat, repeat, repeat to create an amazing solution, like me and Philip here, with our light. And um, this partnership that we've created between UW Stout and Mrs. has been, it's been amazing. Uh, when you're just in one place and you, you don't necessarily see what the possibilities can be. So this partnership with Russia has really um, grown my abilities and hence grown my students' abilities in terms of 3D printing. We have really great ideas, but we don't always have the ability to complete our ideas. And that's where I see the power of this program being, is being able to complete these ideas, these strong ideas. And I hope we continue this partnership. And uh, thank you so much for having me.
So hello again. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Vladimir Kuznetsov. I am, I am local. Uh, well, uh, somehow I'm not, I'm, I'm not only from, from, from Russia, but I, I'm also from, from United States, from, from Iowa. I, I, I have spent uh, uh, almost two years in, uh, uh, in a state not, 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 not so far away from Wisconsin doing my master's degree long ago in, in, in a previous, in a previous uh, life, but still I am, I am, I am very happy that uh, despite the very in interesting uh, period of, uh, of time in Russian-American uh, relations, we could make something, something together. Because yes, we could, we could, we could, really, we could really enrich uh, both, both cultures we could really uh, enri enrich uh, uh, opportunities for, for, for both countries, for both universities, uh, for all of us. It's, 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 uh, working together is a win-win is a situation. But uh, tonight I, I, I want, to, I want to, to speak about, a little bit about uh, the uh, story uh, behind that, that particular uh, Class, uh, class project that uh, brought us, uh, us together tonight. So uh, a year and a half ago, we have started uh, first in Russia, and I, I think it's, it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a new program for the whole world, uh, the program in uh, digital fabrication. Uh, and uh, that was and is our attempt to answer for uh, new challenges uh, which are uh, arising in, in, uh, in, current, in current situation in uh, in world we, we do live uh, at the moment. And, and the, at the moment, I do believe we are uh, experiencing a very major shift in the whole paradigm of uh, production and consumption of goods. We are slightly uh, shifting from the paradigm of massive production to some sort of uh, personal fabrication system. So we are going fro uh, from uh, the system which was built on, on the uh, winnings of industrial revolution. We are slightly going to the, uh, to the next step, to the system uh, which, which is, uh, which is uh, going to be based on uh, major developments of new revolution, which is, which is digital revolution. Digital revolution uh, is, 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 already, is already here. Uh, I, I would say that the digital revolution is now complete in, uh, in, the, fi in the field of uh, information. With, uh, with computers, with evolution of, uh, of computers, uh, we we now have uh, everything, everything related to, to the information, much faster, much more affordable. Uh, internet has really has really changed uh, our life, our lives, in the, in terms of of, of information, and uh, meanings of digital fabrications or uh, digital fabrication tools are now going the same paths, same ways, uh, which computer. Computers uh, had already uh, uh, already made. So we are uh, moving from, let's say, concentrated systems to distributed systems, from uh, in industrial standards to personal devices. The personal fabricator is not is not is not here yet, but. Uh, with, with 3D printers, with CNC milling machine, with whatever else, uh, with whichever uh, fabrication tool, tool which is, which is uh, operated uh, by, by computer, we are moving from expensive and uh, hard to operate machine to more user friendly, much more affordable, and, and so on. So uh, the next, the next uh, step on, on, on this picture is some, some sort of personal fabrication de device. And these, these devices will change 
uh, will change our life uh, as as deeply as internet has has already changed. So uh, in uh, in these days, the, the major output of digital revolution in fabrication uh, is that the border between, let's say, physical world and virtual uh, world is kind of blurred. So uh, the uh, transformation from data to a product or to fabric to material is uh, uh, is is doing much more simply when, when it used to be 10 or 20 or 100 years ago. In this, and, and, and we do believe if, if, if the whole, uh, whole border between physical and virtual uh, world is becoming blurred, then uh, traditional division of specialists into, let's say, designers, engineers, coders, scientists might become obsolete very, very soon. So we, we do believe that nowadays we are in need of a specialist of next generation, uh, of folks with combination of uh, different, different skills, different knowledge from uh, different, different, uh, uh, different uh, fields and with, with the ability to uh, went from an idea to a final product, or at least to a functional, to a functional prototype. So that is why we, 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 have, we have started uh, this, this program, which is, uh, which is kind of a fusion uh, between material science, industrial design, and uh, technology. Uh, in, in our, in our uh, classes, we are using what, what we call uh, project-based uh, project uh, learning. So this, this evening is, is, is just a, a, a perfect, a perfect uh, example of, uh, of, what, of what it means. You could, you could, see, you could see the uh, uh, final results and somehow the, the process of converting of ideas into, into something uh, Solid, tangible, and uh, light emitting. Uh, that, that was uh, um, one year ago. We, we already had a uh, uh, very similar experience with uh, uh, my good friend uh, and uh, good friend of Jennifer, Noah Norton from, from Menominee, from, from the same university, same department um, where Jennifer came. Uh, came from, uh, uh, we, we, had, we had very, very great time one year ago, uh, very, gr very great two, two weeks. But somehow I, 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 I have a feeling that uh, this, this year we went even, even, even more far, farther. We, we, we have, we have uh, completed, uh, well, at least a, a bit, a bit more than, than, than we had it uh, last year. So we are, we are growing somehow. Uh, from the uh, technological point of, uh, of view, our program is, is supported by, uh, by what we call digital fabrication laboratory or, or a fab lab. The concept is, uh, is also uh, came from, from United States, not from Wisconsin, but from uh, Massachusetts, from MIT. Uh, but, but now fab lab is a, is a, global, uh, is a global project. Uh, this, this year we have more than 1,000 labs in, 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 the, uh, in, the, whole, uh, in the whole world. Uh, but all, uh, all of the labs are united by the same uh, principles of, of operation, uh, similar uh, machines and same, same technologies. So uh, with a set of, I would say, simple digital fabrication uh, machines, we have an, uh, an ability to make almost, almost anything. Like for, for instance, something big, or something smart, something teachable, beautiful, simple, 
and yet complicated, uh, fun, unusual, useful, weird, incredible sometimes, cost effective or not, playable, and even, even flyable. And uh, another, another uh, great thing about, about, about the Fab Lab, if at uh, a certain point we are, we are realizing that um, a tool is missing, if, if those five, five, five tools of digital uh, fabrication are not, uh, are not enough uh, for, for making, uh, making our project alive, we could create a new tool, like on uh, this example, this is, this is what, what we used to call uh, a laptop, laptop factory. This is, this is not just a 3D printer, it's a, it's a, a universal digital fabrication machine. It has interchangeable uh, tool, head, tool heads, so it could be switched from 3D printer to desktop milling machine to diode laser uh, engraver. Uh, if we, at some point, uh, would realize that our, our small 3D printer, our regular 3D printer, is not big enough for, for uh, generation or fabrication of, of some real scale or huge, huge object, or whatever, we could, we could uh, make a, a big one like uh, Prinzilla pr printer, which we had uh, presented at the, at, at the first uh, Moscow Mini Maker Fair this, this summer. So uh, with this, this pr uh, printer, we, we could, we could uh, fabricate an uh, object as tall as I am. So we are really living in a fastly changing world. I do believe that this is world is changing from good to better. And it's, it's the, the, uh, the fate of this world is in our hands and in our heads. So with modern means of digital fabrication, we already have an ability to make almost anything. So let's make something new, something beautiful, something useful. Thank you.